Magandang araw, April and Marcus po ang inyong pretty ate sa EdTech Unit. Alam ba ninyo na may webinar o online training session ng EdTech Unit tuwing Sabado? Ang araw na ito ay nakalaan para sa ating mga mahal na kaguruan upang turuan sila ng mga bagong kaalaman at kakayahan sa paggamit ng mga bagong software at applications para sa pinaka-epektibong paraan at lubos mapagpusay ang kanilang paraan ng pagtuturo. This is also a refresher session for our beloved teachers to enhance their skills in technology. Every Saturday, we will conduct webinar sessions for teachers about the use, advantages, and relevance of different blended learning software applications. Ang webinar seryang ito ay magsisimula ng alas 9 ng umaga hanggang alas 12 ng tanghali para sa morning session. Magsisimula naman ng alauna at magtatapos ng alas 4 ng hapon ang afternoon session. You can watch us in our DepEd EdTech Unit Facebook page, Educational Technology Unit YouTube channel, DepEd Tayo and DepEd Philippines. Kita-kits tayo tuwing Sabado! Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po, at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pumumuno ni Undersecretary Alain Del B. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. Hello learners! Happy Choose English Day! I am Tutor Jamie and I will be guiding and sharing knowledge about creative nonfiction. So get ready as we amplify the levels of our imagination and use it in writing literary pieces in our most creative way. So we are now in quarter three, we, uh, week two of creative nonfiction. And last March 23, we were introduced to this writing technique, this new writing technique, if I may add. And it was described as truth well told. No? And for today, uh, today's e to Life session, we will be dig digging in deeper into another topic. And I will, I actually have a good news for you. So. This topic is not new as you have already encountered this lesson in your elementary and junior high school days. So, super dali lang nito. So, I bet this should be a piece of cake. Ayan. So, but before we go even further, if you remember po last week, I have given you a task, my dear uh, learners and my uh, yung mga kasama ko pong teachers and also for those who are tuning in, I have given you uh, a task. Uh, this, ito po yun. Let me share it to you. Yung express yourself, no? I called out uh, and challenged my, uh, our learners and our viewers to share your thoughts and write a two stanza poem. And uh, I also mentioned that you should submit it as a comment here on uh, e to live video. However, when I looked at it, I think it was uh, uh, filtered, so hindi ko nakita iba. Pero may humabol, no? Uh, someone actually uh, answered uh, for the task, face the task. And now let us have our first e to live. Uh, Itulay Brave Soul, the one who looked in the eye of last week's task, accepted and conquered the fear of words and the English language itself. 
amidst the struggle of not doing anything because of the ECQ and the Holy Week break. So kahit nakakatamad, he even uh, uh, moved this way and uh, messaged me na, Ma'am, here is my answer to your to your uh challenge and this is uh, he is the pride of Kaloocan City Business High School and let me share to you his work ayan so shout out to Mark Acosta of Kaloocan City Business High School let us read his um, express yourself poem entitled be who you want to be ayan ngayon pa lang Mark congratulations when I want to achieve something, I aim for the gold. Don't tell me what to do. Don't fit me into the mold. I don't waste time. I speed things up. I make my own lane and no one can disrupt. Sometimes you have to stand out from the crowd. Do what you love and wear your own crown. Because you are a bird who is free to fly. Just be yourself and fight for what's right. Yeah, and so this is a poem from uh, Mark Acosta of Kaloocan City Business High School. Congratulations, Mark. And uh, I'm proud that you have accepted the challenge and it was really uh, good. You were awesome, okay? There, so shout out po muna before we move on. By the way, shout out again to our uh, STO Kaloocan, headed by our very supportive STS, Dr. Losaria, to my Kaloocan City Business High School uh, high school family, headed by our OIC Principal, Dr. Ivy Perez, along with the department heads and coordinators, particularly the English department uh, with Sir Rudney Putong. So stay safe po tayong lahat. Ayan. So good afternoon, not only for those teacher, for those learners, but also teachers all over the country. So thank you, Paul, for uh, being with us today. So for today, we have uh, our lesson, our second week on creative nonfiction, and this is our uh, objective for the day. So this is about different different literary elements, and our objective is to. Uh, create samples of different literary elements based on one's experience, like the use of imagery, figure of speech, and uh, in sharing your emotions. Ayan. So good afternoon po sa lahat po na nakatutok today. Ayan. So we move on. Ayan. So we begin by uh, defining literary elements. So for the literary elements, when we speak of literary elements, we are referring to the components of a literary piece. Literary elements, I would like to think of this, uh, this aspect of literature as something like of uh, an ingredient when we are cooking. I would always want to compare this or to relate this to an ingredient when I teach my students. Um, like, for example, if I am cooking sinigang na baboy, its ingredients would be, uh, ano ba mga ingredients ng sinigang na baboy? So of course, yung, yung pork, and then also you have the, uh, yung, yung vegetables, and then yung, for us, yung pang paasim, and then may kamatis, may sibuyas, and all, di ba? So those are the ingredients. So just like that, we are, we can compare that in the simplest form, yung literary elements as the components of a literary piece. Uh, that would mean that every literary piece would have, possibly would have these elements. No, There. So we have character, setting, plot, and theme. Well, yung iba sa atin, we would have, uh, we would differ. No, we would have uh, a different view of what literary elements would be. Some would actually... Uh, refer literary elements as also the literary devices or the literary techniques, which is really almost the same din naman, as long as we put them all together to make a masterpiece of a literature or a literary piece. Okay, there. So these are the components of literary pieces. Now for the literary device naman, literary devices, we refer to those, I would like to refer it as the tools used in a literary piece. So if literary elements would be the ingredients, how do we cook 
our literature by uh, is through the use of the tools that we have or that we know literary devices so my dear um uh, learners no i mentioned earlier na talagang okay na talagang um naririnig nyo na to even during since elementary and even in junior high school so parang pa ulit ulit na lang no but um i think this would really help you especially if you are aiming for aiming at uh, writing your first uh novel short story essay or uh, any literary piece Ayan. So shout out po sa mga sa mga naka-tune in Ma'am Je uh, Miss Jessica Ocampo Yums 12A Diego Silang High School uh Ma'am Paner Mary Grace D Yums 12A Diego Silang Ayan. Good afternoon po Ayan. so next we have so what what are these literary devices I would like to first uh, mention the four the four most common. No, meron tayong apat na talagang kumbaga sa ano eh, gas gas na gas gas na. But we still use it because they are the most common, and they we find it really um, uh, easy to use them. So these are imagery, metaphor, simile, and personification. Okay, so at marami pa yung iba. Would you believe that there would be more than 20 uh, literary devices, figures of speech, and all others na hindi natin lahat alam? But of course, we would like to emphasize on the few or the most common. Okay. So let's have first the uh, the first uh, our quick quiz. So yung etong apat na to. No, imagery, metaphor, simile, personification. This is too common that uh, parang mabilisan lang ma, ma, ma de define na natin to by ourselves. No, so when we say imagery, it's like uh, referring or uh, addressing the five senses, and we picture uh, the author uses this to picture an image in the minds of the readers. No, and then metaphor and simile are actually two of the best ways into comparing two unlike things metaphor with uh using a direct comparison simile using as or like and then personification putting a human uh trait or human character into something that is inanimate so let's try a quick quiz so for your answers just type in your uh your uh replies or your answers on the chat box okay so you just need to identify let's just identify let's read this the context or the content and then let's just identify if it's uh imagery personification uh simile or metaphor so get natin this one the sunset was the most gorgeous they'd ever seen the clouds were edged with pink and gold. So what is this? What literary device? Or is this imagery? Is this simile, metaphor, or personification? What is your answer? So watching from Gulod Senior High School in Batanga City. Kamusta po kayo dyan? Watching from Cagayan de Oro City and Rimboyos Palomas. Sir Martin, uh, John Martin A. De Guzman, watching from Caloocan City Business High School. Hello, sir. Watching from Victoria Homes Elementary School, Mountain Lupa. Ayan, may mga sagot na. So, from Carl Vincent Apordo, imagery. Nika Lucine, imagery. Jamar Alibango, imagery. So, ang dami kong nakikita and you answered imagery. So, let's see if it's really imagery. Yes, it's imagery and visual in particular. So why do we think that it's uh, visual or why did we coin it as imagery? Because when you look at the sentence or when you read the sentence, it actually pictures an image of a sunset that not just a sunset, but a gorgeous uh, clouds that edge with 
pink and gold. Saan ka makakita ng pink and gold? I haven't seen that. Pero it actually created that picture, that image in my mind when I read that, those uh, words. No? So imagery really helps in um, putting an expression or putting an image in your reader's mind. Okay, so very good. Next, let's do another. Sabi sa inyo, very easy to eh. Piece, piece of cake. This is um, a quotation from Shakespeare. All the world's a stage and all men, all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances. So what do you think is the, uh, the literary device used in this quotation? Is it imagery, simile, is it metaphor, is it personification? What do you think? So, inihintay ko pa yung sagot ng iba. So, habang inihintay ko, uh, shout out to uh, Sander J.P. Paderes. Uh, 11 Humes, Marks. Hindi ko maba, hindi ko mapronounce yung ano. I, I don't understand, I, I don't know the meaning of GTD LNHS. Ayan. To my students from Caloacan City Business High School, thank you for uh, uh, participating today. Okay, so. I'm sure you know your answers, pero malamang medyo nahirapan tayo, no? With the connection. But then we have the answer. We have metaphor, metaphor from uh, uh, Carl Vincent Apordo. We have from Queen Fiona Ma uh, Marie Villanueva, metaphor. Joshua Belches metaphor. Let's see if it's metaphor. It is metaphor. Ayan. Because in this statement or in this quotation, Shakespeare has uh, compared two unlike things. So stage and world. Indirect niyang kinumpare. There's no need for any other words or expressions to uh to do the comparison. So, metaphor. Good job. Next. So, this is from I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud by William Wordsworth. A host of golden daffodils beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Ako, I would understand if you would answer differently from what is mentioned here. Pwedeng more than one kasi I, I, I have uh, uh, selected uh, lines wherein hindi lang, hindi lang isa or it can be two uh, literary device, devices. But of course, we choose the most obvious. And I see here answers like per personification by uh, Kate and Marie Figura. Jessa Barbaruar, personification. Personification from uh, Albert Jerome de Una, gen, uh, from General. Oh, no, wala. Wait lang. Ayon. De Leon National High School. General Trias De Leon National High School. I hope I mentioned that correctly. Ayan. So let's see it's, if it's personification. It is personification. Ayan. So personification, fluttering and dancing in the breeze would be the daffodils. They really don't do that because basically they're flowers, but they are they are personifying a character trait that uh, humans do or uh, animate uh, or a living thing does. Well, daffodils also are living things. Okay, next. I think this is the last, no, there. It's cold outside, like when you walked out my life. Why you walked out my life? 
this is a this is a part of the lyrics of heartbreak anniversary so what do you think is uh the literary device you may also may you may also coin it with another literary device but of course we would like to uh, get or answer the most obvious or the obvious answer there i see kayla kathleen palazon mentioned simile uh jessica carillo simile liabado simile Ayan, sabi nyo, simile. Tingnan nga natin kung ang heartbreak anniversary ay simile. Yes, it is simile. Okay, why? Because uh, uh, the singer or the, the composer of the song actually uh, compared to unlike things, that would be the weather outside or the feeling outside and the feeling of someone walking out of your life. O yan, napakabigat, napaka, napaka heartbreaking naman talaga yung kantang ito. Ano? Okay, so there, simile is the correct answer. Now, let's try uh, your, your uh, uh, idea on this one. So your turn. What you're going to do is that I will flash a literary device and try, you know, so my sing a sentence lang or statement. Try to answer this question uh, truthfully, of course, non, ano tayo, creative nonfiction. Truthfully, Genevieve Marigza, Arella, pa shout out daw. Hello po, ma'am. Yeah. So truth, uh, truthfully, you have to answer this question. How are you feeling to? How are you feeling today? Sorry, uh, typo. How are you feeling today? And then I will flash a literary device wherein you can format your your answer. Okay. So for this one, we have simile. So answer this question using a for uh, a statement in sim with simile or a literary device uh, simile. If I if I would put it, ako I would uh, if I answer this question, how are you feeling today? Simile, so it's like as like and as no. Um, I am great as how I am great as a wonderful song. I feel great like uh, hearing my most favorite carpenter song. Carpenter song parang napagalata ang edad ni ma'am. No? So, and you, uh, would you like to uh, give out your your statement for this one? Practice lang tayo since we are doing creative nonfiction. Truthfully, ha? Ah, doesn't matter if you're feeling sad or feeling low, if you're feeling happy, excited. There. Shout out to Miss Joyce and Bernal. M. Hume, uh, Humes, 12A, Diego Sila. So there you have it. Mine would be, I feel great, just like the song, uh, It's Yesterday Once More. So I have here, Queen Fiona Marie Villanueva. I'm feeling lazy like a cat under the under a sun. There, so good job, uh, uh, Miss Villanueva. Nakakatawa naman. Like a cat under a sun. Good job. So that's how you feel, like lazy. Oo nga eh, kasi tapos na klase, no? But then we still have this one. So thank you for that. Meron pang isa, Carl Vincent Apordo. On this day, I feel like I'm a gloomy weather. Like I'm, like gloomy weather. Oh, okay. So parang sad ka. Vivian Soron, Villa Senor. Hope I pronounced that right. I feel light as the cloud in the sky. Good job. And then Richard, Richan Liabado. I feel like I am happy today. Feel lang. But of course, yeah, thank you. And then Joshua Bell says, I'm a bit good like my grades. <laughs> um, I'm, I have to check that, Mr. Belches. Okay, there. And then, Faye I feel like I was a child. Ayan. So, parang playful yata ang feeling ni Kohol. Ayan. Thank you very much. How about if we use it, if we answer the same question in metaphor? Ayan. Sabi sa inyo, madadali lang yan eh. Let's try this one. How about a statement using a literary device metaphor? Just the same. How are you feeling today?
So if metaphor, I'm feeling in love today according to John Vidago Decreet. So, ayan. So, congratulations, you're feeling in love. But uh, we, uh, let's try you doing that um, uh, in in a direct comparison of what you feel today on something that is uh, something that is uh, different from your feelings. So, pag metaphor direct po yan. So, it's actually uh, the most common way of expressing our feeling i feel like a, i feel i am a hot potato today okay yun. or um i am i am a, i am a great big bowl of happiness today okay i feel as if i'm inside oven as if i'm inside uh, in an uh, the oven Okay, so medyo parang challenging yat ang metaphor. Sige, I'll wait for your other uh, comments but uh, on this one. So we can move on. Move on talaga ang, ang mention ko. Okay, literary devices. Now, after those four most common uh, literary devices that we use, we also have the three na medyo, this could be uh, a bit new to most of us or to most of you, no? There. I'm I'm feeling blue. Ayan, Ma'am Liabado, Richan Liabado. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, after those four uh, most common, let's move to the three um, one uh, three of the uh, not really known or hindi madalas ginagamit or we may be using them but we really don't know what they are called. Okay? So, these are Allusion, diction, and foreshadowing. So let's have allusion first. So when we say allusion, it's an indirect reference to some idea, figure, other text, place, or event that originates from outside the text. So it's uh, in simplest form, it's just referring to something else or when I say something else, it's more of like, a, for example, you are using a statement and then you use allusion. When you use allusion, you are referring to, instead of explain mo pa ng pagkahaba-haba what you, want, what you want to say, you're just going to allude it to something like a verse in the, uh, a story from the Bible, a character from the Bible, a character in the Greek mythology and all. Let me give you an example. Chocolate is my Achilles heel. So instead of just saying it, chocolate is my weakness, which is uh, not really creative in saying. No, uh, you use allusion to mean some to mean that it's your weakness. So, uh, what is the reference there? The reference there is that you are saying that chocolate would be your weakness. Instead of saying weakness, you use Achilles heel. The term Achilles heel. So who is Achilles? Achilles is uh, a character, or a, uh, in Greek mythology, he is one of the uh, the best warriors. No, he is actually one of the uh, the characters. If you watch Troy, no, that stars Brad Pitt um, and Orlando Bloom. Uh, si Achilles yung isa sa mga major characters ton. Achilles is one of the best uh, warriors in the Greek mythology. Some say that he is actually the son of God, one of the son, uh, Zeus, I think. Uh, so correct me if I'm wrong, no? Sa mga, sa mga teachers na kasama natin. And um, Achilles cannot be defeated. He is actually one of the heroes in the fall of Troy. When the Greeks came in together and tried to uh, to defeat Troy kasi Troy is really uh, hindi siya mapa, hindi siya mapasok hindi siya ma conquer and Achilles was one of the instruments who were victorious in uh, conquering the uh, Troy um, so amidst uh, sa kabila ng uh, kanyang lakas no despite of his strength his comparable strength Achilles has one weakness and that is his heel and the reason na bakit 
sa dami sa dami parte ng katawan niya yung heel niya ang may weakness no at doon siya napana or natamaan ng arrow ni uh, ni uh, natamaan ng arrow and yun yung kinamatay niya uh, the reason why yun ang pinaka ano some uh, in the greek mythology and sabe when he was uh, like baptized yung heel niya yung nilubog siya sa tubig Yes, there. So nilubog siya sa tubig, parang yung heel niya ang hindi na na lagyan or hindi na lagyan ng uh, ng power kasi syempre doon siya hinawakan eh. So yun yung pinaka uh, mahina sa kanya. Yun yung kanyang weakness. So when we use that in allusion, Achilles heel would mean that it's your weakness or weakness uh, Yes, that's why. Right. Correct, no? So yun din yung sabi ni Carl Vincent Apordo. Ayan. So, that is allusion. So, when you say you have to allude something, your chocolate is my Achilles heel, would be, that is my weakness. So, di ba? Parang, pag ganun, parang ang dami mo nang na, uh, uh, nabasa na stories. No? So, these are the most common allusions that are used. So, when you say Her Hercules or Herculean, that would mean the strength. No, Herculean strength. He he possesses Herculean strength. Or he is the Hercules in the family. So meaning he is the uh, the strongest in the family. Pandora's box. So we all know the story of Pandora. Uh, Pandora's box. So he she opened. Pandora opened a box that is not supposed to be opened and came out a lot of plagues and diseases and problems that actually started. Uh, in the world, in, in uh, on Earth or in the world, so that would mean consequences. Cupid, of course, we all know who Cupid is, and then so we uh, alluded to love or matchmaker, and then Garden of Eden, uh, paradise or or downfall and or downfall. So, diba we all know what happened in the Garden of Eden there, and then Noah's Ark would be like it's an impossible task. That has to be used. So, like studying, uh, um, uh, finishing with flying colors would be my Noah's Ark. No, so parang it's your impossible task, especially if you're not studying. And then David and Goliath. This is something that we always use. So the battle between, uh, let's say, Philippines and China would be like David and Goliath. No, so pero pero. In David and Goliath, we the underdog is David, but he be, but eventually he was the one who triumphed over the uh, the battle. And then Tower of Babel would be a tragic end. No, so after uh, years of uh, uh, building a very tall or enormous uh, tower, uh, it all ended tragically. No, there. So those are the allusions, and there are others. There are more. Like for example, if we say like. Um, you are you are uh, the Romeo of my life. So alluding to Romeo, the character in Romeo and Juliet, meaning the the partner, no, the forever partner in life. Ayan. So next we have diction. So when we when we speak of diction, naman, this is more on the choice of words and style of expression that an author makes and uses in a work of literature. To uh, show uh, dif uh, different points of view. Let me give you an example. So, could you be so kind as to pass me the milk versus give me that? So, th these two statements would actually mean that you want to, something to be given to you. But you mention it or you, you say it in two different ways. So, who would you be talking to? Pag yung first statement... Who do you think you would be talking to? Kanino mo kaya sinasabi yan? Pag, could you be so kind as to pass me the milk? Kanino mo kaya sinasabi yan? Sa, maybe you would say that to a superior or to an elder. But you would not say, give me that. To an elder or a superior. No? Mababa, nako, makikita mong hinahanap mo if you, if you speak that way no? to an elder. So when we speak of diction, it's like, um, choosing your words or choosing the words of the characters and then showing through that, through diction, what characterization or what character 
he or she is portraying like for example if you want your characters to be uh, to to be like a formal person or an educated person you would want to put in a dialogue that is formal for that person okay there so diction actually helps in determining the point of view of the story so if pagpabulong yung gusto mong point of view bumubulong si character you would use like kung paano mo kausapin yung sarili mo di ba then establishes the voice of the narrator so most probably if you are like once upon a time in a faraway land there was a tiny kingdom peaceful prosperous and rich in romance and tradition would be would establish the voice of the narrator that there is a narrator in the story no and he or she or that narrator knows everything and then it also helps in a closely connecting uh, with the characterization so yun nga kasi characterization also builds uh the, the dialogue and the word choice for the character is for the characters is uh dapat magkasama yun eh. if you have your character and you have built it na parang siga siga siya dapat kasama pati yung diction or kasama pati yung word choice na gagamitin niya all throughout the story okay there next is foreshadowing when we speak naman of foreshadowing it is a hint of what would happen in a story and it often appears at the beginning of a story or a chapter but sometimes in film especially they would put the foreshadowing in between in between uh, the events or in between plots no so it makes uh the the parang conflict na ito parang ito na yung conflict kala natin okay na tapos meron pa pala ulit Parang ganon. So, it makes the story exciting and even more interesting. Okay, there are, uh, foreshadowing can actually be presented through a dialogue. Like when someone says, I have goosebumps. Parang kinakabahan ako. We would know that, uh, we would know that uh, something is happening, something bad is happening or something um, exciting is happening. So we also use it through you, uh, pag nakakakita tayo ng symbols like blood. So when we see like, uh, when you enter in a house and then there's a candle there, it's only lit by a candle and there's blood and then there's this skull and then there's a, the, the candle is sticking on top of the skull. So you would have a foreshadowing that this house is scary or something would happen here. Also with weather, omen, superstitions, and character reactions. Okay. So there are different types of foreshadowings. One would be Chekhov's gun or obvious showing of what might happen in the story. This is actually, this actually uh, coined by Anton Chekhov, a Russian ano siya eh, physician siya and uh, also um, uh, uh, nito? Uh, he makes drama or he is into drama too okay when we say Chekhov's gun I have there the Harry Potter example no so if you are a fan of Harry Potter no diba uh, for all the the books of Harry Potter or even the film everything that they practice in school talagang gagamitin nila when Harry Potter would encounter or would have to battle the evil, uh, the evil ones, no, yung mga kaaway niya. Like for example, on Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, um, ay hindi, doon na lang tayo sa uh, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire there. So, Chekhov's gun would mean that, uh, the foreshadowing there is that on the onset pa lang, uh, the goblet of fire is already there and hindi siya nandoon for display it has a significant role in that harry potter uh, episode or harry potter chapter no or in that harry potter film and sabi kasi ni anton shekov if you are going to put an item and you are going to uh, state that parang ipapakita mo I with the uh, papakita mo sa uh, papakita mo sa ano tawag niyan, sa sa story if that is if you, if you if you intend to show it like yung goblet of fire it should not stay as something na parang display lang it has to uh, it has to have a significance 
in the middle or at the end of the story, dapat talaga gagamitin mo siya. Kaya tinawag na Chekhov's gun kasi there is this one story that Anton Chekhov has has uh, has done na pinakita yung uh, yung yung rifle, yung Russian rifle. Ang sabi niya, kung i-display mo yan, it has to fire on the next scene. Dapat pumutok yan, dapat magamit yan. So that's a foreshadowing of Chekhov's gun. What it means of Chekhov's gun. Dapat, if you are going to introduce a character, that character has to have a significant role in any part of the story. Hindi siya pang display lang. Okay? There. Next foreshadowing would be symbolic. Symbols are used to note a change in the character's luck or attitude. Example is Lion King. In this picture, or it depicts the parang parang binyag or parang presentation of Simba as a cub and the, soon to be the king of Pride Rock. Diba? Uh, this, pinili ko to kasi it has that rain ng sun, it actually directed on Simba at the ons, at the very point na tinaas siya ni Rafiki. Pero, if you have watched this movie, you would see that the time na uh, umuulan naman, it was raining when uh, when uh, Simba uh, tried to claim naman uh, the the throne again from his uncle Scar. Diba? So parang may symbol yung araw, yung rain ng sun, and yung symbol din nung, nung pag-ulan. Okay. So, ah. Okay. So, moving forward. Wait lang. There are other two uh, two foreshadowing techniques. So, ito na lang. Yung red herring naman. Red herring. When we say naman red herring, it's a uh, prophecy pala muna. Uh, linked with prophecy or fortune telling. So, in this movie, Kung Fu Panda, it was prophesized that a panda would be the uh, dragon warrior. Sorry, nakapapanood ko lang niyang kagabi. Yan. So, nabigay ko siyang example. And then, this one, one of my favorite uh, movies would be the Red Herring Foreshadowing. In Ocean's 8, the attention is diverted. So, uh, their intention, ang pinakita nila sa mga tao, sa viewer, is that uh, only the, uh, ang, ang, they will only steal the, the necklace, the toussaint that is hanging on the actress or on Daphne Kluger's uh, neck. Yun lang ang alam ng viewers. But then they diverted, uh, they diverted the the attention. And at the end of the story or at the end of the film, they also robbed the other necklaces din pala, no? Yung mga nakadisplay in the uh, in the museum without the audience knowing. So it's actually just like a surprise. Yeah. And then you have flashback. Author needs the reader to know something that doesn't fit with the current storyline. So Nemo, Finding Nemo, uh, all throughout the story, it's just Marlin and Nemo who are uh, moving in the story. But the flashback was uh, was uh, provided at the beginning to explain why in the whole movie, uh, uh, Coral, the mother of Nemo, the wife of uh, Marlin, is not with them and it also explains back it's super protective why uh why uh marlin is too protective of his son nemo yeah so yan yung mga foreshadowing techniques okay so ready set create learners and then and everyone who is tuned in this is another task that i would like you to uh to accept and uh, to uh share by next uh etoli session choose a literary device one that we have met we have uh, discussed and use it to create any of the following so you can choose any of these one these are real uh experiences that you have everybody has no so you can choose from one and then choose a literary device but uh so you first one would be describe the place where you stay during the 2020 ecq do an do a creative non-fiction uh, in this uh, setting, 
by using any literary device that we have uh, discussed. Or you can narrate your one boring afternoon using a literary device. And then or kaya, write a dialogue with your new and old self pre and during pandemic or what you think yourself would be after pandemic. And then limit your your paragraph into five or six sentences only. And then also send it here. You can actually send it to me through PM or send it here next time and put the hashtag itulay CNF, uh, hashtag itulay CNF or uh, creative nonfiction. Ayan, so over time na ako. So, um, so that's all for today. I hope I would be able to see your creative nonfiction work by uh, next week, para we can share it to our uh, to our learners and to everyone who is joining us in creative nonfiction. So thank you for today and stay safe, everyone. Bye. Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating itulay tutorial session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating Ito Live free online tutorial session sa Filipino. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating Ito Live tutorial session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippines social media accounts. Paalam!